Hey all, Russ here, Arbeer TV, welcome. Check it out. This is Marquette, Iowa. We're right on the Mississippi River. Just picked up some fuel right there at Casey's. And this bridge right ahead, we're gonna jump on it. We're heading to Wisconsin. Just came up from Guttenberg along the Mississippi. Wasn't that a cool town? Very historic and old. Be sure to check out that last video. All right, here we go. We're gonna cross the mighty Mississippi River. Yay. gonna say so long Iowa fun little trip through the state this summer it's middle of August hot and humid it's hot everywhere and we're gonna explore this little town here called Prairie du Chien Wisconsin they got a cool museum and it's right on the Mississippi River All right, I'm gonna make a left. I still got a little time yet before the museum opens. We're gonna explore downtown. It's supposed to be a park right up here. When I got fuel back there, I kinda spent a few minutes on the maps. Get the lay of the land. I'm actually gonna spend the night. We're gonna spend the night in the RV park just north of town. Okay, historic downtown is on this street right to the right, but let's uh, check out this park first. Part of the old fort supposed to be down here, a cool old building that used to be a railroad hotel. And mighty Mississippi River. It's Sunday morning, uh, mid-morning, so we should have a pretty good chance of seeing historic downtown, all that good stuff. See a few trailers and motorhomes. They must have something going down here. Quite a few, actually, huh? There's that old building I seen online. It's always fun to look for it when you're exploring on the internet, but when you actually find it, it's even better. And there's our river. Maybe a big boat will go by. Okay, this big building on the right, what I was reading, back in the 1800s, that was a railroad hotel. Then through the years, it's been a bunch of stuff. Now it's like a uh, meeting hall and event type building for weddings and stuff. And straight on down that way is part of the old fort. All right, skip park, take a walk. Old style brick, got the arched windows. Dousman House. If those walls could talk, huh? My goodness. That's seen the test of time.
pretty cool to think about all the people that have been in that thing through all the years. Over, what, 140, 50 years? And they're still using it. That's cool. That is cool. What a huge park down here. Alright, well, we found this. What do you say? You want to check out the river? Another flower garden. Looking good. Absolutely gorgeous. Green grass. Get to mow the grass here. <laughs> I know. I'm from Arizona. All these dirt and rock. Wow, look at this one. Now that's a lot of effort into something like that. Cool. Oh, the bees are liking it. You can hear them buzzing around in there. All right, here's our mighty Mississippi. Oh, what are they making here? Looks like a boat launch. Maybe redoing one now. Uh. Water's good and calm. That river can really get going though. Probably floods down here too. our bridge we just crossed over. That museum's back in town the other direction. Maybe we'll leave here, we'll go check Old Town and go hit the museum. Ooh, storyboard. Seventeen hundreds. The main village was down here. Then they built a permanent settlement. Now it's a big park. Wow. War eighteen twelve. Oh my goodness, this was all taken over by the British Canadians. And then it was reclaimed back to the U.S. during the War of 1812. Go figure. Right here in Wisconsin on the Mississippi. This goes to show you small towns can have big history. Well, let's do this. We'll hop in a van. We'll drive down to the other end of this park. Yeah. And we'll head for downtown. Starting to heat up today. Humidity's picking back up. That was a huge storm I was in down there in Dubuque, Iowa, right on the river. Pretty cool place down here, though, this big old park. They got almost half the roads down here closed off. A lot of construction going.
train engine looks brand new. Must haul freight something out of here. Looks active. Well, a whole bunch of this is fenced off. Right in there is where the old fort was. It's not here any longer. We'll check out more at the museum downtown. So I'm going to keep going. kinds of stuff that even that old house out there is all fenced off there's part of the old reconstructed fort right here yeah we'll see more at the other museum all right here we go Historic old town, straight ahead. Flower pots hanging from the light poles, good old small town USA. Ooh, brick buildings, yay. Look at this, streets are wide open, we can park anywhere. Park up here in the middle, we'll just walk down both directions. Let's check her out. Sports World Outlet for sale. Chocolates, ooh, the sweet tooth. <laughs> oh man. Good thing they're closed. Yeah, gotta love it. Small towns, flower pots. This makes it feel homey, doesn't it? There's a boat shop. Bet they're busy being on the Mississippi River. Sports shop over there. Wow, look at that building. Look at the corner in that thing, the rounded. Uh, room. More real estate signs. Old fire escape. You never see that now. right in the sidewalk. This one's talking about Lieutenant Jefferson Davis. Zachary Taylor. Hey, there's that van again. Keep seeing that thing all over the place. I like the colors on those. Oh, here's another plaque in the sidewalk. I like how they got the brick laid out around it.
kind of worn down. This one says Wisconsin's only battlefield was fought here during the War 1812. Oop, I see the sign. There it is, Fort Crawford Museum. That's where we're heading to. It's supposed to have a couple buildings full of all kinds of cool historic stuff. I see one more plaque over here. Let's check it out. says Mississippi River was a cultural crossroads for American Indians here. Well, they definitely got history here. Some old buildings approve it. Still being used. 2023. Still going. How cool is that? Well, what do you say we're gonna go find that Fort Crawford Museum? Check that, they should be open by now. Well, Google Maps wants me to go down that street, but. I want to check out the rest of downtown. We'll drive through. Nowadays, they can't make anything that lasts a hundred years. These old buildings, they should learn from it. Little shops, there's a Jim's bar right there in the corner. You can go to Jim's. <laughs> Go say hi to Jim, have a cold one. Yeah, look at this, here's Bob's bar on the left. So you got Jim and Bob's bar. <laughs> right downtown here. Cool. All right, should be a pretty main street up here we need to take. Roundabouts. Seen a lot of them. Iowa had a ton of these things. They do work. All right, looks like we gotta go down here about a mile or so, then cut back uh, a couple streets. Roundabout number two. And we got roundabout number three coming up. Cut down here to Beaumont Street. Make a left, should be a couple blocks up here on the right. Fort Crawford Museum. There it is, there's one of the buildings right here. On the right. Wow, that looks like a new building, huh? All kinds of storyboards and signs. Kinda tucked in here with a bunch of houses. Here it is, what do you say, you wanna check it out? Heck yeah.
cool. It is open. Fort Crawford's second fort. First one flooded. So they built this one up on the hill. Smart. This was a surgeon hospital, eight companies of troops. All kinds of history here. Great River Road, we're following some of it. Plus, being from Arizona, I'm not used to the humidity either. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah, very nice lady in there. She had quite a bit of knowledge of the area. Yeah, that floods down there, so they've had trouble keeping those buildings going down at that park we were at. The mighty Mississippi floods. But this building we're about going into now is the old hospital. Reconstructed, of course. Then they have another building full of local history about the town. That should work. And second Fort Crawford National Registered uh, Historic Landmarks since 1968. So it's not that new. But look at this, it's kind of nestled right in uh, residential area. That's kind of unusual, huh? She said that building over there is apartments. All right, let's head on in. Wow, look at all this. Talking, what is it, doctors? This is like their hospital, what it, what it was like back then, hospital ward, helping soldiers and who knows who. Alexis St. Martin. Dr. Beaumont's experiments, oh boy. <laughs> I wonder if they trained doctors here. Maybe they did that. Military hospitals. Well, this Dr. Beaumont must have been pretty famous. Almost everything's named after him. Paintings of what the whole fort looked like. Old time photography paintings. Military frontier. That's probably all down there along the Mississippi River. Wow, look at that fort. That thing was huge. Mighty Mississippi. Ruins and restoration. This is how they discovered it. Thank goodness they're saving history. Hopefully they save it forever. Gotta save it.
can't change it. An old original windowsill. <laughs> Still there. more how they were digging up the ruins. That'd be interesting to do sometime. That's tedious work though. Sifting through all that little pieces of history. Now we'll look at the fort. That must be right here, huh? Or is that down at the park? That must be down at the park. Historic figures of the times back then. My goodness, look at all these glass cases. All the doctors watching it get work done. Oh, man. <laughs> uh. Technology, it was probably a little crude back then. Eek. <laughs> Yikes. Old time social media. An actual newspaper that you could read. And replica of what the old dentist office was. So this thing's really about medicine back in the day. The old pharmacy there probably, huh? All the old bottles. Stethoscope. What it was back then. Indian medicine. They were smart. They knew how to use all the herbs and everything from the land. Wooden wheelchairs. They got a little bit of everything in here. Civil War.
old records of patients that actually uh, were treated. Ever noticed the handwriting of people back in those days? It was just immaculate. Now no one even writes a type on a phone. <laughs> Historic events. Well, pretty cool. What do you say? I think this is it in here. We'll go check out the other building. Very well done display. I've, I've never seen much in the way of medical like this for old history. Creaky old wooden floor. That was air conditioned in there. That felt good. Okay, what's this one about? Black Hawk Surrender. About a big battle, 35 miles north of here, Bad Axe. And he surrendered to the U.S. 1832. Wow. Almost 200 years. Then he was ordered release by President Andrew Jackson. Cool. More history right here in this little Wisconsin town. Look at the size of these trees. <laughs> Guarantee you they were around way back. Things are huge. And we got one more building to check out. She said this one's more local history about the town. Cannon pattern cannon from 1827. Bet that thing made a racket when it went off. There's that van again out in the street. <laughs> okay, let's go on in. Bluff Street, 1910. You know, it doesn't look. <laughs> Too much different now, does it? We're just down there. Old map layout of what the town was back then. Railroad going through. Plus in Mississippi you'd have what? All the steamboats and everything. Pretty good sized building. Didn't look that big from uh, the outside. A little bit of everything in here. Well, let's start looking, I guess. I always like the old paintings. Replica freight office. More of the old buildings.
Wow, that's a good picture. That's life size, isn't it? It's how they dressed back then. Their uniforms. Oh goodness, look at this picture. There's the flood. There's one of the floods. That just swallowed up this town. Wow. Shows you the power of the Mississippi. It can take away, huh? And looks like a little bit about their local schools. Old pictures. And the old school, school desk. Chalkboard. No one has a chalkboard anymore. Yeah, they got a lot of school history in here. There you go. Here's one of the old paddle wheelers. The Capitol, 1920 to 1945. Life in a river town. I think it'd be a pretty cool life, except for winter. <laughs> or when that river floods it like that. Old clothes. Wow, that's a cool picture. Huge. Delta Queen. That'd be fun to take a ride on one of these. Someday. Big old paddle wheeler in the Mississippi. A lot of them now are what? Casinos and stuff. Floating hotels and casinos. Old rifle. Very well done. Very well collected. A lot of work goes into putting something like this together. I've seen these in other museums. They're pretty collectible. Good old iron lung. And how about a wooden horse? Tobacco. Wow. I didn't know that. Cigars and tobacco. They grew tobacco here. Oh, I'll be darned. You don't think about Wisconsin and cigars, do you? Of course, I don't smoke. Looks like it was big business here. When you think of Wisconsin, you think cheese, don't you? I do anyway. Old fire department stuff. Fossils. I'm a fossil. <laughs> what the heck is this thing? A 
or a press, tobacco press. I'll be darned. about War 1812. And the British were here. You don't even think about that either when you think of Wisconsin. You always think like back east, New York and Virginia and all those places. Talking about how they were all tied together by trade, traditions, French and British communities. Then they all went to war. Then the British burnt down the old fort when they surrendered. Old tools back in the day. I'm still amazed by tobacco. That just, I don't know, just didn't think about that. Learn something new every time you come in one of these little museums. Cool little stop. I missed the storyboard. I want to walk up and catch it in front of the other building. Yeah, look at the size of that thing. I'll guarantee you that tree was standing here way back when all the settlers were around. That one too, probably. this one 1999 they unearthed these blocks when they were doing road work out in Beaumont Street limestone from the banks of the Mississippi isn't that something there they are well, that's cool they saved that Let's head for the RV park. I'm kind of tired. Been a long day. For more information about RVR TV and me, be sure to check out my website, rvrtv.tv. Sign up for my free newsletter. We're putting one out now on the 5th and the 20th of each month. There you'll find out uh, up and coming uh, travels, pictures. We got puzzles on there, all kinds of cool stuff on the newsletter itself. Also, you can get free downloads, free screensaver downloads straight off the website. And I have a merch store, hats, shirts, coffee mugs, and all that helps support future travels in this channel. And I greatly appreciate it. Once again, it's rvertv.tv. Found this place online. It's called Sports Unlimited Campground. It's one of the few ones around that I could find that uh, had sites this time of year. A lot of these places are pretty booked up. Early in the morning, we're jetting out of here. We're going to do some miles. We're going to shoot up to Lake Superior.
58 made it let me go in and see where they want me to park this place is massive a lot of park models mobile homes Across the road is uh, Mississippi River. They got boat docks, cabins, everything here. There's my spot. Nice shade trees. Yeah, I want to do some miles early in the morning. Get out of this warmer weather. We're going to get up where it's cooler. We're going to chase 70 degrees. Now you can see the size of this place few clouds rolling in too. They got park models. It's almost like a mobile home park and RV park. This place could have its own zip code way off. There's a Mississippi River. Rise and shine, it's early, we're hitting the road, we're going to do some miles, we're going to head all the way up to Lake Superior this morning. Leaving the Sportsman's RV Park Campground, this place is so huge, <laughs> it could be a town here. It was okay, a uh, lot of people and a lot of rules, all that, but good enough. Quick overnight stop, got some sleep. We're going to go up here and catch Highway 52, but we're going to do some miles. I want to hopefully make it up. It's about a five-hour ride, get up to uh, Superior, Wisconsin. And I think right up the road here, there's one stop I want to make. It's another one of those locking dams. Then we're going to truck north. Get some cool weather, hopefully. Here it is, right off to the left. They should be opening their gates. Sun's just now coming up. You know me, I like to get out early. But I was kind of looking at everything and uh, just decided to get on up to Lake Superior. So we should be up there by noon, one o'clock, something like that. But Got to check out one more of these lock and dam areas. And the gate's open. I timed this perfect. Probably a lot of fishermen come out to these places, huh? Cool. We say let's check her out. Maybe we'll catch a big boat coming through. I'm the only one here. Yay. That is some serious tree coverage. There's cliffs underneath all that. 
greenery. Okay, which one's this? This is number nine, I think. Wow, that board's pretty faded. About the barges. What's this one? Lock and dam number nine. Eastman, Wisconsin. Ah, it looks like he's still over an hour away. Yeah. Well, one of the workers here came over and told me he, he checked his uh, <coughs> maps. Big boat coming over, still over an hour away, so I don't want to wait that long. Lifestyle of the Eagles. But here you go. There's the lock. Mighty Mississippi. A little foggy this morning, too. Sure brought my fishing pole, huh? <laughs> Don't need a net to shut the doors. <laughs> well, cool. We'll see more of these. Another time. But, what, we catch one? Uh, this is our third one. Not only controls the flows, but the level of the river, everything. A boating freeway right here. Can't imagine the amount of ships, barges, everything that's come through here. Pretty cool. I like this sign here the best, this board really shows you what they control. Pretty good feat of engineering, huh? All right, let's do some miles. Well, there you go. That's what the Mississippi looks like as the sun's coming up. It is really wide. That's a huge dam. That goes way across. There's a little fog rolling in and out. Absolutely gorgeous. Wow, this town is right on the river. Talk about a view. Ooh, little park up here. Look at this. Story. Well, we gotta stop. I wanna grab a cup of coffee before I get going to. Need to find a gas station.
welcome to Fairyville, the village of Fairyville. Cool little stop here, I can't resist. <laughs> Every time I say, let's do some miles, yeah, sure. Tribute to a great river. Got that right, mighty Mississippi. Still looking for Mark Twain out here sitting somewhere. It's almost got like its own weather system here. I run through little patches of fog. But what a cool little town. Look at this, right on the river. You got a waterfront view. Looks like a former governor was from this area. 71-77, serving in World War II. Wow. Quite an honor for him. Disappearing islands are talking about, oh, the lock and dams. They've changed the whole terrain. Look at that. You, early 1900s, you could wade across the Mississippi River. Wow. Not anymore. The winds have changed. Oh, I bet. You know, I've been blessed so far. No winds. Of course, been hot and humid. Island restoration. Well, well, that's cool. A lot of local type conservation. Very good. Talking about a bad storm being rolling through here. Wow. Every little town has their own history to it. Everywhere you go. That's incredible. Okay. Let's hop in that van and do some miles. Cool little stop here in Ferryville. Bet it'd be a great place to come fishing, boating, just a cool little town. A lot of history here though, huh? Is it foggy? My goodness, can't see anything. Okay, we're going to pick up Highway 53 up here. Keep on trucking north. Now 
forward moving. Don't have too many miles left. Terrain is changing, getting flat. Still lots of trees. One thing about all these roads, you're really lined with trees. So it's limited what you can see. There's all kinds of houses and all kinds of cool stuff. But we're making it. We're going to end up up here at Wisconsin Point. Right on the Minnesota-Wisconsin state line. Of miles, but it's worth it, and it is much cooler up here. We're gonna see the mighty Lake Superior shortly. Okay, I need to make a right. I cheated, I stopped back a ways and really mapped this out. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Okay, here, yep, here we go. We're going to end up right at the point of the state line for Wisconsin and uh, Minnesota. This should be pretty cool. And here's our other turn. Drive clear out to the end. It's supposed to be a lighthouse out here, all kinds of cool stuff. Look at that parking area. You can't see it because of the trees. Lake Superior is right off to the right. Wow, look at the size of that uh, harbor over there. Probably unload all the big barges coming in. All the grain. Looking forward to this. We're going to be spending a lot of time along the upper part of Wisconsin and Michigan. Like a jungle in here, isn't it? It is thick. Wonder if you can camp out here, I doubt it. Yay, we did it. Made it to the end. This is going to be cool. Cool, I see storyboards. There's the lighthouse. Alright. We say ready to go for a walk. This is as far as you can go, this corner of Wisconsin. Look at this. 1861. They created the channel. Now it's 500 feet wide and 32 feet deep. Probably they keep dredging it. Can you imagine all the ships that have passed through here? Goodness.
quite a few shipwrecks right here. These great lakes, they can really get like a mini ocean. The Odin, the Essex, Sarah Smith, laying on the bottom. Cool, looks like we can walk out all the way out to that marker. And there's the lighthouse. You always wonder how many ships a lighthouse saves. You never probably hear the good stories. That's quite a ways out there. Well, what do you say? We'll take a walk up over by the pier. Danger waves, I bet. Big old wind storms. Right here is the state line. Wisconsin. The other side right here is Minnesota. <laughs> Love it. You know, two years I drove through here and didn't stop. This time we're stopping. Matter of fact, we're going to explore a lot over the next couple weeks. We're going to go clear across the upper part of Wisconsin and Michigan. This should be one epic trip. as far out as we can walk. Deep water channel marker. Really calm weather right now. Perfect, really. It's only in the 70s here. A little humid. I will admit that, but it's much cooler. Uh, here's a place to spend August. Then way across, it's pretty clear. I thought we might hit fire smoke. They've had a lot of Canadian wildfire smoke, but you can see there's Duluth. The big city of Duluth, Minnesota. Actually, that metal pier right there across is Minnesota. <laughs> cool. Well, let's go down to the other end a little bit and we'll get a closer look at those uh, big piers. Looks like old abandoned buildings from uh, probably when they had uh, lighthouse keepers and all that out here. They're all fenced, still standing, windows are busted out. Ooh, big ship in there unloading right now. Cool. Yeah, look at the size of them things.
Too bad a big one doesn't come through now, huh? I need to find that app that tracks uh, marine traffic. But we did it all the way from the Mississippi up to here to Lake Superior and this was the uh, goal to get up here and find cooler weather in the month of August. I'd like to be in that sailboat right there just all tucked away by yourself. Nice calm water, good place to anchor out. No ships coming in now. Well, cool stop. If you ever get up here, come out to this Wisconsin point. There's other areas that you can pull off and access uh, Lake Superior and fish. It wasn't very far off that Highway 2 and 53. I'm going to spend the night here. I found an RV park to camp for the night. Guess what in the morning? We're going to start one really cool drive across the upper part of Wisconsin. Not only Wisconsin, it'll take us right into Michigan, and we're just going to keep on going. It's only August. The journey's only starting. Talk soon. <laughs>